look what we got here guys the brand new short blog now i decided to make this video to show you guys the inside and out of the new twin turbo v6 engine that you guys are hearing about on the social media and even on youtube now the problem with these engine is of course you guys already don't know the main is the main bearing and they're failing and toyota said you know it's machining debris from the factory but that's not what i wanted to make this video for i wanted to just show you guys what the inside and the assembly process is like to show you guys if there are any similarities that you might see between the 2gr and the 3ur in the previous generation now this is the main culprit right here if toyota get this main bearing issue fixed and situated then there's no reason to doubt this engine nothing about this engine says it's new or at least there are some differences but if you look at it if you take a quick glance you'll think it's a 2gr engine from a tacoma or you know that's used in the previous models and generations now we got the cylinder head installed on the left hand side now, it's important to keep those intake ports taped up and those tubes taped so you know nothing falls inside the cylinders that's the reason why you see that you can see the valve springs are in place and the valves valve stems and keepers everything is there but on the the bank on the right hand side you can just see the cylinder head gaskets in place and we're getting ready to install the cylinder head on that side as well and we just want to keep everything in this video nice and simple throughout the assembly process we're not going to get too technical as to torque specs and every single measurements are supposed to be this is just to show you guys the inside and to show you guys this it's not really too complicated inside the truck or whatever when it's inside the vehicle it looks really complicated but i want to show you guys you know it is possible to build these things in a shop nothing about this is complicated to the average mechanic well i wouldn't say average you re you are you do require some skills to be able to work on something like this but we don't want to pretend it's rocket science any skillful master technician would be able to identify what they're looking at even most of you guys on youtube too would be able to identify some of these parts now you can see the paints on the the paint mark on the cylinder head bolts that's because they want you to torque torque them down and then give them an additional turn and have them at x amount of degrees so they have that paint mark there to identify if they're all already torqued down they should all be facing a certain way now we got both banks installed now what you're looking at here is the cam cradles are in place cam cradle and then that front timing cover that's one of the differences between this engine and the previous 2gr the previous 2gr didn't have a two-piece front timing cover it was, it was just one piece but on the twin turbo v6 engine that toyota has now in lexus the front cover is a two-piece timing cover so now you can see both cams are installed on the cylinder heads after we torque them down and we installed the front timing cover at first i was a little worried because i'm like okay great now we have more chances for oil leaks but the uh, four cylinders used on the 18 camrys that generation the a25a also has the same concept where they also uses a two-piece timing cover for the front and we haven't seen any issues with any leaks pertaining to that yet and they've been out for a while so i can't really say i hate it that bad and you can see the ceiling there that's what you want a nice little thin strip you don't want it bulging out you don't want a lot of you know fit pitch and seal it oozing out nice little a little groove and a little beat this is that um vacuum pump you guys are looking at driven by the camshaft here you got where your high pressure fuel pump would sit also driven by the cam lobe here we're looking down where the intake valley is going to be this is where your intake ports are you can see i have it taped up you see that stamp there v35a now what you guys are looking at here is the timing cover with the the timing chain i mean installed and you can see the paint marks like i said very similar to the 2gr you see the front paint mark on the camp uh actuator there and then you see right behind it on that gear on the intermediate chain there's another paint mark that's that's how you know everything's time that paint mark has to overlap that paint mark behind it and then if you look down on the crankshaft key there's a, there's also a dot and a paint mark on the chain that's got to be lined up and if you look at the right hand bank 
you're going to see another paint mark on the cam gear and then also behind it. Here's the paint mark on the cam gear and then the same thing on the other side. On the right hand, there's a on the intermediate chain, there's a paint mark there as well. This is a crucial step. And now we're going to install the chain for the oil pump. Now you see even on the crank key, a yellow mark. And then right there to the left, that's your oil pump. That also has to be timed. See that? Pink mark on dot on the oil pump. Yellow mark on the chain to the dot on the crank key. Everything has to be timed. This is a crucial step because once you have this time or set up, you can't go back in once it's installed in the vehicle. So you want to make sure you double check, triple check, check a hundred times if you have to. Just make sure it's, everything is lined up so when you get ready to start the car, you don't get an extended crank or you don't bend valves. Now we got the valve covers installed. We look down. You can see the lower intake manifold. It's not really a manifold. It's, it's not really a plenum either. It's, it says that's where the uh, intercooler is going to be mounted to. I know some stuff you guys are seeing or more stuff is being added. But, you know, we're just going to keep things simple. Try to identify the parts we already talked about. You know, this is the vacuum pump we mentioned earlier. Like I said, once you really get down inside, it's not too complicated. And I know some guys worry that there's no way you're going to put this back together. Look down inside the valley. You, and you don't want to drop nothing there either. This is your injectors for your port. So your low pressure. You see how it sits on that, on that plenum going to where you guys saw the previous tapes, the blue tape on the intake port. That's where that's mounted to, to get ready to feed air inside each individual cylinders. And right below it, that's your direct injectors there, the rails. So you got the low, lower little air intake divider. That's what we're going to call it. I don't have the name that Toyota used in front of me. And you see you got a couple cooling hoses going through the uh, through the throttle body. That's all that is. Those are just cooling hoses to help keep the throttle body cool during operation. Here's your throttle body right here. Like I said, guys, it's not too complicated. All these things can only be mounted one way. So it's hard to really mix things up. I know after a while, it will look like there's just a bunch of wires and hoses everywhere. But, you know, to a mechanic, you know, every part goes somewhere and it's really hard to mix them up. Here you got your oil filter housing. That's where your oil filter is going to go. Because right there, and it has an oil, uh, oil cooler going through it to keep the oil nice and cool. Like I say, it's not a bad design. Here's that two-piece timing cover I was talking about. You can see the sealant coming out of both of the covers. Nice little bead. You don't want a lot of fippage, you know, smearing out and bulging out, out of the covers. Nice little bead. That's how you know it was the right amount that was applied. All right, guys, now we got the intercoolers and the air ducts, you know, mounted and a couple of accessories. Now it's starting to look like something, right? But like I said, keep it simple. You got a couple of pulleys, air compressors, more pulleys, crankshaft balancer, alternator. You know, all stuff you can recognize, you know, just by looking at it. Here's your upper radiator hose, you know, that's connecting the cooling system. More hoses for the cooling system. After a while, you don't have to guess what it's used for. Here's your compressor lines. And here we're going to talk a little bit about the turbos. Now you see these lines coming, going to the turbo. Those are actually cooling uh, coolant lines. And then right below it, this is where the turbo gets its oil supply to keep the bearings nice and lubricated. See, it comes directly from the block. That's your crankshaft sensor there. Your oil dipstick, engine mount bracket. Now, oil goes in there, keep the bearings lubricated, but the bearings also need to stay nice and cool. And this is the setup that I like. It has these coolant lines going in the turbos, you know, to keep it nice and cool. And each one has their own cooling line going through it, each bank. Now it goes right around the back of the engine. And if you follow it, it goes right onto the turbo on the right-hand bank. Same concept. It got cooling lines going in, 
out to keep the turbos nice and cool. And of course, right below it, you've got your oil lines to keep the oil bearings lubricated during operation. And I, I feel like this system right here is going to increase the life of that turbo, of the turbos in, the, uh, in this engine. Because the concept is a good idea. It stays nice and cool and it's well lubricated. More cooling lines going in right in, uh, to the intercooler. It tees off there. So you also got, it shares the same cooling system. Now, the cooling system for the turbos and the intercooler is separate. It's, it's separate from the cooling system that the engine uses. So this system right here has its own water pump, has its own radiator system in front of the radiator grill. It doesn't use the same radiator as the engine's water pump, engine water pump or the heater core. It has its own separate. These are the hoses right here. And it has its own electric water pump that supplies and pumps the coolant through, through the radiator and through the intercooler and then through the turbos to keep things nice and cool. While the engine itself has its own separate water pump, own separate radiator that keeps the engine and the heater core nice and warm and try to keep things balanced out. But as far as the intercoolers and the turbos, completely separate cooling system. Here you have your air ducts right here. Like I said, in the car, it may be a little bit uh, difficult to identify all these components. High pressure fuel pump that we talked about, that's cam driven by the cam load. There's a vacuum hose going to the brake booster, coming off the vacuum pump, cam driven as well. Like I said, keep things simple. Don't overcomplicate it. I know it looks like it's a bunch of mess balled up. But it's really not that bad. Now, just imagine your air box right here. That's where it will pull the air from. And now the turbo is going to do its thing, spool up. And then it's just going to shoot the air right into the intercooler that's being cooled by the cooling system and those hoses that we saw in the previous scene. Which is a nice concept. And here we have your fuel line. So imagine your fuel line coming from the gas tank is going to connect to that line right here. And then that's just going to feed under the, the air duct you see there. And then it's just going to split to the other side. And then from there, it's just going to make its way around to the other side again. And it's going to tee off. That's what you're going to see. It's going to tee off right into the high pressure pump. And then from the high pressure pump, it's going to want to make its way down to the port injectors. Obviously, these have port injection and then they have direct injection. So this is the long block that we're hoping to get for these trucks and that's having these issues. Ideally, we don't want to do a short block, but as you can see, it's not really an issue to do one. But ideally, this is what this is what we want, just a long block. So now what you're looking at is everything we talked about with the engine harness attached. Like I said, it just looks like a ball of mess. You know, some are saying there's no way you're going to put this back together, but it really only goes back one way. After you realize how the engineers designed these things, every bracket, every bolt, every nut, you know, all has their own designated spot. It's really hard to mix match things when you're putting an engine back together. Nowadays, engineers have done a great job engineering these things and the way to put them together. It's not always easy, but, you know, if you have experience, it's not too difficult either. So that's all I got for you guys. Any future update, I'll be sure to drop another video. I just wanted to just show you guys. It's not too complicated. Hope you guys find this video informative. And if you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. As always, thanks for watching.